Well, guess who stopped by for our amazing YC weekend? We got the boys of Building 429, fellas. Hello, hello, hello. I, I feel like you guys have been here enough that we've created some sort of relationship and friendship that uh, we, we should go down the line and then we'll start talking about where we've come from to where we are now. All right, sounds good. I am Michael. I am from North Carolina. I'm Jason. from. Uh, where do I, I'm from Texas and North Carolina. Yeah, kind of yeah. both. I think I just said I'm Jason from Building 429. <laughs> Texas, yeah, something like that. I'm Aaron. I'm from Kentucky. And I'm Jesse. I'm from Texas. Is that an American thing where you have to say who you are and then where, what state you're officially from? I guess yeah, so. Yeah, it think usually is like a normal wow. yeah. thing. That's weird. Think I about never it. thought well, about I guess there's so many different. Okay, let me ask you this then. When, when you go to Starbucks, I'm assuming. Yeah. Right? yeah a lot. And uh, you go to order a coffee. Do you order a coffee or do you order a cup of coffee? Think about that oh. for a second. I, I order a, a tall iced coffee. That's it. When I order so, coffee, though, I think I'll have a, he says I'll a have cup. A cup Will of coffee. Cup I of do coffee. say that. See? Yes. That's, I a, don't that's do an that. American. It is. I've come to this conclusion now. It's those idiotic Americans in their cups. See, I, don't, Ugh. I just say yeah. I want a small coffee or a medium coffee. Okay, so then you're good. Yeah, you're more Canadian cup. than we want. Yeah, maybe I mix it up. I don't know. Oh, you're a cup of coffee. I'm a cup of coffee. Congratulations. Hey. The, uh, the other thing that I've noticed that uh, when you ask somebody where they're from and they're, they'll say, oh, I'm from Dallas or I'm from, or actually they're not actually from the real city. They're from yeah. a yeah. suburb yes. of. Yes. That's right. Yes. Where if you were That's to ask true. somebody here, where are you from? I'm from Edmonton. You are actually legitimately yeah, from that like city. Very specific. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. When I, I say I'm from Dallas, I'm actually from Dallas. There you are. I, well, I actually, yeah. I, mean, Jesus I do, I, I'm right. from the middle of nowhere. So I will tell people that I, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, which technically I'm from Shepherdsville, Kentucky, which is 15 miles or so south of Louisville. But nobody knows yeah, where Shepherdsville is. And if you say Louisville, because it's, you know, I'm there all the time, it's just as much at home, then usually we'll have something in common about the town because they're, they're, oh, you guys have the Kentucky Derby there. You have, you know, so anyway, yes. Good explanation. Yeah, that was a good one. Let's see. Um, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> he's like, well, so, like, well okay. Okay. so Louisville, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you this then. Uh, going throughout your, your guys' career, I mean, you guys are now family men, and it, could you ever imagine that it was going to be from when you guys first started to where you are now that you're going to be able to impact as much as you have? Man, I... Man, when I started a band, I just wanted to play rock and roll. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I believed, I, I did believe that somehow rock and roll could impact a person's life. Um, uh, and I think the, we all believed that. But... But truthfully, um, I don't think any of us ever knew that it would be like really what we do for a living. You know what I mean? It seems so far-fetched because when we were young, you know, we, we would go see Stephen Curtis and we'd go watch DC Talk and stuff like that. And, and um, it just seemed like a completely different world. In fact, all the people, when we started the band, we had people that were like, you're crazy. Stop. Don't do that. It's a waste yeah, of your time. Lots of people. And, and, and really like in our face about it, you know. Um, but it's been one of those cool things where God's just been faithful and he's, he's, uh, he's provided for our needs and he's provided for our families. We're able to do this. And, and, uh, and honestly, I mean, guys from nowhere are hanging out in Edmonton today, you know, playing, um, this event. It's pretty cool. It's just a really cool thing. And again, for us to be able to look and say 15 year career, where has been the high point? We're at it right now. That's pretty cool. And, and we love it. How, how has uh, being in a band and being able to travel around the world and make music uh, changed your lives? It's a deep question, I know. Yeah, and if you could sum question. it all up and... I, I would say this. Is, I'll start with this because you guys all... Ha you can jump on this. I'm just going to say perspective. Mm -hmm. um, when you come from small town um, that, that I'm from, at least, the, men the mentality there is that what is in that city is gospel. That's it. This is, this is all there is. And the way we see things is the way it is, period. And then you get on a, on a plane, you fly to Rwanda, Africa, right? And, and you're, you're like walk off and you meet other people who are from their city saying this is all there is. You're all looking at the same God, but you're not seeing each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you're just seeing a different slice of God from every uh, angle. And I think it's one of those interesting things to have perspective that my father, who's never moved from the same town in Mount Pleasant, will never have. Um, I think that's one of the benefits of what we do. Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, the the perspective is key because I find being from a small town that just going, you know, the mission trips that we've done, the different third world countries that we've gone to and seeing how people live there um, and how people, the condition that people live in in, in other parts of the world, 
uh, a lot of times as Americans, we don't realize how blessed, or Canadians, we don't realize how blessed that we are. You know, I mean, and you go there and you see what's going on and, and um, you know, come home and explain to your spouse, like, you know, it's, God has blessed our countries and, and, our, and our families more than we could ever know. And no matter what we go through, um, our trials that we go through, it's, there's, a, there's people that are hurting much worse. So it gives us a, a heart. I think it, it finds a way, it helps, whatever prejudices you grow up with, like if you grow up in small town Texas and you go to New York City and you're there for any amount of time, all of a sudden everybody, every, everything everybody said about New York City people, right, becomes a little bit untrue because you see the way they actually have, they live in a completely different environment and a completely different mindset. Same thing for Americans who've never been to Canada and, or Canadians who've never been to the States. Um, I think there's just so much perspective in being able to be world travelers and we're, we're definitely thankful for that. Let, let's keep with the perspective thing then. Does it change how you guys parent? Does it change how you guys are husbands and how you act uh, on not only individuals but for your guys' performances and what you guys are writing to? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean. There's no doubt that, um, that I, um, we, I'm, I'm much slower to judge than I would have been um, from if I had stayed where I was. Um, and, and I think that basically just means that, that I, I see a whole lot more room for grace and mercy because I've been able, and we see this, we, we talk about this. I mean, we see a whole lot more room for grace and mercy in the gospel than maybe some, some people would. And, um, and as I teach my children, um, you know, again, those prejudices that, that were, were real. I mean, it's just a reality of what we grew up in in different places. And that's different for every person. And there are prejudices that you grow up in no matter where you grow up. Uh, to some degree, um, you know, for my children, I'm, I'm able to break those down and go, that, that's not, that's not reality. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to be afraid of a person because they look like this or that, you know, and, and I wouldn't really know that honestly, um, without, um, getting out of the bubble that I grew up in. When it comes to, uh, the musical side of things, I mean, a band is guitars and drums and that, but when you guys come to, uh, writing music and the way you perform music, how much has that changed over the years from when you guys first started to where you are now? Man, just, I, I, I don't know. We actually, I, we're, we're different. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that, you know, getting four different guys in a room together, putting them in a band together, you know, going out there and tour, there's a certain level of, of, I mean, you have to trust each other. You have to learn each other and, and grow together. And I think all that, you know, carries over in the musical side and it, and it translates, uh, you see it on stage and, and, and all of that. So I think that that's, you know, really helped us a lot. Yeah. And just what you were saying, you know, with trust, we actually, we're one of the few bands actually that we re all record in the studio and we give input to each other. Like, if I'm playing a drum part and Jason doesn't like it, he tells me, and I respect that, and then we try something different or vice versa. And uh, we get along really good in the studio, and I think after 15 years of being brothers and friends, it just, you know, yeah, it just works. comes out in the music. So, I, think, I was going to jump in and say this about the writing. Yeah. Um, it's one thing to write for your local church. It's another thing entirely to write for the world. Um, and, and I say it because I'm a worship pastor at my church. There are subject matters that I could write that would be specific to my church that, that if I didn't have the perspective that, of travel like we have and seeing these different, you, you would think, because I think a lot of times we get caught up in thinking that we've written a hit song that's going to be sung the world around, but it's, it's specific to a purpose at, that God has in your hometown. You know what I mean? Um, the perspective to be able to write worldwide is very different. And I'm not saying that we've got it figured out, but we're surrounded by people who do that all the time. And so it changes our songwriting completely. So new album is out, new singles are out. What is next for you guys? We're currently, we're currently writing. Uh, the, the, we're a year away from recording the next record, but we're writing it right now. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're writing that, trying to figure out what we're going to do next year. Um, we've just come off a tour. We headlined a tour, 40 cities with Family Force 5 and Hawk Nelson on it uh, in the States. It was awesome. And now we're just trying to figure out what the next move will be moving forward um, in, the, in the new year, right? Don't be a strange voice. Come to Canada right. anytime. Hey, we love it here. Get some Timmy's. We'd we love to have you. Drop an A but, uh, in the sentence. Can't, can't wait good to time, see you guys eh? soon, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's <you> it. <laughs> Thanks, man.